In our previous videos, we saw how impractical it is to do manual string handling to create HTML documents. In this video, we're going to focus on a really powerful feature from Flask, which is the usage of template engines. We're going to use template engines to generate HTML documents in an easier way. So the first thing we're going to do is, of course, uncomment our O3 module, O3 template string inside view, and we're going to take a look at this particular application. I will see that I have a simple piece of HTML document as I used to have, uh, but in this case I see this kind of strange placeholder. These are placeholders that are going to be used by the Flask template engine. The template engine used by Flask is called Shinsha2, and even though it seems like it's the only template engine that we can use, it's actually something that we can change. We can provide a special setting to change the template engine that we're going to use. Of course, that by default, we are going to use the Shinsha2 template engine. The purpose of a template engine is to provide a better language to specify or create documents. Of course, we will be focusing on creating HTML documents, but you could easily create JSON documents, CDS documents, etc. In this case, what we're doing is just defining a placeholder, in this case, library name. So we have from some, from some data source, we have gotten the name of our library. And what we want to do is inject it in our HTML documents in a, in a scalable way, if you want, without doing string manipulation. In this case, what we're doing is just we're defining the HTML document, creating the placeholder. And when we want to render this HTML, what we're doing is just using this render template string function that we import from the Flask module to combine the HTML document, the one with placeholders, with the data that we want to use to fill these placeholders. So in this case, we have welcome to our library name, that's the placeholder, and then we will combine them in this line right here, and it will basically put the content of the variable library name inside the placeholder that I had just created. I'm going to quickly change the names so you see that the names doesn't have to be always related. We are just referencing uh, the parameter used to invoke the function with the placeholder that we have created. So I'm going to do something like, for example, remove this, and remove this, and you will see that it will work. I'm going to show you how it's working right now. So we have basically the PO name that was specified in a different variable and it was combined in this line right here by the render template string function. We're combining the HTML with the placeholder with the data that we want to plug inside that document. In this case, I have already included the code to construct the HTML list with our authors. In this case, we are including the authors we have in the authors variable that we could think that it was retrieved, for example, from a database. The way we do this is by using a for loop, which is a feature from the Shinsha template. So let me show you first how it works. If I reload the page, I will see the list of authors generated. I will try, for example, removing one of these authors and you will see how it was generated again dynamically. The important part is, of course, this one right here in which we are doing a for loop and we are basically iterating through the author's variable, this one right here. This author's variable was fed to the render template string as we were doing with the library name. So we are basically combining the HTML document, the HTML initial variable, the one with the placeholders, with the data that we want to use to fill those blank spots. In this case, the author's variable points basically to the author's list. And then we are inside a template, we're iterating through all these authors and we are creating a new list item for every one of the authors that we have. If we inspect the source code generated, we see basically what we were doing before. 
This is a simple example of how to use HTML and template engines, but we still are having an issue. We have a big chunk of HTML code inside our Python function. We're combining Python and HTML, and that is of course something that we wanna fix, and we will do it in the next video.